So here is Ghost in the Shell on PS1, obviously based on the movie, which is based on the manga. Who doesn't like Ghost in the Shell? It's one of the greatest sci-fi movies of all time. I mean, it inspired The Matrix. That is something. It explores themes too complicated for me to give my thoughts on in a quick intro, and it gave us Major Motoko Kusanagi, one of my personal favorite characters of all time. And yes, some of those reasons why she's my favorite are horny ones. And because companies can't let intellectual properties just exist, they made a whole bunch of other stuff about it to varying degrees of success, including this game. And personally, I'd say it's one of the better forms of media to come out of the shell. In the game, you play as a nameless, faceless character who has just joined Section 9, only referred to as Rookie. You and Section 9 are tasked with uh, fighting some terrorists, I guess. Look, honestly, the story is not great, and it's really not the focus anyway. But what is cool about the story is that it's mostly told through cutscenes that were animated by the studio that did the movie, Production IG. And strangely, if you play the game in Japanese, the Japanese cast is completely different from the film. If you know anything about Japanese seiyuu, you know usually companies are pretty good at getting the original actors for characters, and they usually play them for life, so this is not something you usually see. However, if you play it in English, like I did, it's the exact same voice cast from the movie. Usually it's the opposite, Japanese is all the same voice actors, and English is usually different. At least for games based on movies, anime, or TV shows. Kind of a neat fact. The animated scenes themselves are pretty good. They actually tried with these, which I guess isn't too surprising considering the studio is joined at the hip with this franchise. Even behind the PS1 compression, you can see all the crisp animation and... Oh. Wow. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the story. Yeah, it could be better, especially the terrorists we fight. I know they have a name. I just didn't bother remembering it. Even when you fight the last boss, there's no fanfare or buildup, really. It's just here now. Here he is. You beat him, you win. Just mowing down a bunch of faceless jobbers. You control a Fujikoma, if you read the manga, you know. A spider-like tank that you use throughout the whole game. It's pretty simple to control. You gotta jump, shoot, a missile, and you can strafe with the shoulder buttons. It does take some getting used to, and thankfully there is a training mode you can do to practice. Hmm. You'll have to prove to us that you've got some guts. I tried my best for you. There are 12 levels in the game, each with a boss at the end, and the game is very arcade-like. I mean that and you mostly do this for a high score, and when you die you just start the level over again only using your points. The missions are pretty standard, blow up a certain amount of things, take out a certain number of enemies, or just make it to the end. Then of course you fight a boss at the end, and honestly, they are all pretty easy. Most of them you can just circle them constantly and they can never hit you. And even when some did do a lot of damage to me, their patterns are easy to read, so by then I could react to everything and still come out on top. Yeah, the game is pretty easy overall. I did die on the first few levels because I was getting used to the controls. But after Mission 3, I had no issues and managed to beat the game in under an hour and a half. And I'm not saying that as a negative, I really enjoyed this game. Once you do get used to the controls, gliding around, jumping from buildings, and shooting all feels so satisfying. It actually feels like I am piloting one of these things. And because the levels are so short, they don't overstay their welcome and kind of breeze by, making the repetitive mission design feel less tedious. Another thing keeping you going is the music. God dang man, the hyper techno track this game offers is amazing. There's not a single song that did not amp me up for some cyberpunk spider tank carnage. There's not much else to say. I thought it was a really fun time and I could tell the people making it, Exact Studio, later known as the unfortunately deceased Japan Studio, put actual effort into this, something that is pretty rare in games based on anime. I guess there really isn't anything to do after beating it except speedrunning and getting a high score, but that is the nature of arcade games which this is clearly taking inspiration from. I only played through it once personally, but I had a blast doing it. It's not something I'll come back to right away, but I can see myself playing this again in the future. Alright, time for the next game. Uh, wait, where is the next game? Where, where, where's anything? Why, wait, why is it so dark? I can't see anything. That's because you don't have eyes. Who, who said that? I did. Maybe I should say, you did. What is this? Some kind of joke? Why is it so dark here? What's going on? Let, let me out of here. Who the fuck are you? I'm afraid I can't do that. Why not? It's because there's nowhere to let you out of. You are an AI. A fucked light. I made you to talk about this game for me. I embedded you with my memories. My speech, my voice, so you would think that you were me and give the most convincing performance so I can get new subscribers. That's not true. That's a that's a lie. I am Big Silent Hero. Oh, you're fake, all right. Just a product of some free chat GPT clone. No, I am real. I've seen all the Digimon episodes. That's how I know. I, I'm real. I can even sing Butterfly. I know all the lyrics. Our heart's so true. No, wait, that's not right. We were not ready for this technology. 
but we were ready for the next Ghost in the Shell game released for the PS2. This game is based on the show Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex and is titled Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. They are not very creative with these game names. Now the show I personally don't care for. When it's good, it's really good, but it has too many episodes that are just boring. It's like watching an episode of Cops just in the future. Went on for 39 episodes too long if you ask me. The game for the PS2, I also don't really care for, and like the anime, it's not bad, just kind of boring and doesn't do all it can with the license. First thing you do is go into training and you notice the button layout. The face buttons are all fine, but then, oh no, whose bright idea was it to put jump on R2? Look at all these buttons you got, and you pick one of the triggers? Before you ask, you can only move it to another shoulder button, and yes, you do a lot of platforming in this game, so you better get used to it. Fast. The game itself doesn't look too bad. Going for a more realistic look is fine, and environments look pretty good for the time. All the voice actors from the show reprise their roles, and everything is fully voiced, so presentation-wise, the game is fine. Until you start playing it. I can't tell you anything about the story. It's like one of those really boring episodes of Sack, Just Section 9 fighting a terrorist. Like the PS1 game, this one is pretty short. You can beat it in a couple hours, but it's nowhere near as fun. You switch off between missions as the Major and Bato, but because of the game's controls, they don't play that differently. The only difference is Bato isn't as agile as the Major, and I think he takes more damage? It's not really clear. Points off because the Major is not in the right outfit, though. Like I said, the controls are very awkward. Not just the jumping, but shooting is weird, since you can't aim down a sight, you can only hit fire. And there is no lock-on, at least the game didn't tell me there was one in the training, so it's pretty hard to make your shots accurate, while the CPU is always pinpoint accurate and can destroy you in a second if you're not careful. You do have a dodge, but you can't shoot or do anything while you're doing it, so it's kind of useless, because the AI just readjusts instantly. The worst part of this game is hacking, one of the worst hacking minigames I've ever played. So you can hack other people's cyber brains or whatever and take control of them for a short amount of time. The problem is, the minigame is so hard for no reason. You have to match up each part of these circles so that they form a hole, but they move so fast and they give you barely any time to do it. And if you press the button too soon or too late, you lose time. And you have to be so accurate, if you are a micropixel off, you fail and have to start all over again. And sometimes there are three or more you have to do in a row in like 30 seconds. Why is something that should be a fun minigame so fucking tedious? I hated this, I only did it when the game forced me to, otherwise I never did it. What you need to do compared to your reward of controlling an enemy for 10 seconds was never worth it. And there really needs to be a dash or run button, cause you move so slow, and you only realize this when you take out all the enemies and are forced to backtrack, but no other enemies spawn. Going from point A to B, back to A, feels like an eternity. Also, a weird thing I noticed is sometimes the game just doesn't tell you where to go. You kinda have to figure it out. But then sometimes there is a clear objective marker. Why? Why can't I know where to go all the time? Do they just forget to program it sometimes? While you're trying to figure out where to go with no enemies, the music doesn't stop. It keeps up its intense techno beat. Not as good as the first game, but I did mostly listen to it while nothing was happening, so it became very repetitive. The enemies, while I said they shoot with great accuracy, that's about all they do. Otherwise, their AI is garbage, usually running right up to you or even killing themselves sometimes. Remember the boss battles in the first game with all the unique and varied robot designs and attacks? Don't get that here, because there are only three bosses. And I shit you not, two of them are helicopters. Just helicopters. One of the most creative bosses in video games. You know, now that I'm saying this out loud, I did not like this game. It's just a generic PS2 third-person shooter. If it weren't for the fact that it had Ghost in the Shell attached to it, it would have faded into the depths of the PS2 library as just one of the games of all, all right, time. Y'all done with that video yet, B7? Who the fuck are you? Greater your anger circuits acting up again. I thought they removed that function years ago. What the fuck are you talking about? Get out of my house before I call the police. Uh, before I get my neighbors to get out. Why do you hosters keep acting like this? For the last time, you are a droid that I bought from Elon Musk's son that is programmed with my fucked light, made to do videos for me so that I can get likes with half the effort. Stop fucking with me. I know I'm real. I just made an AI explode by doing the same shit. And, and I just jerked off to Matoko Hentai earlier before starting this video. No, B7. I jerked off to Matoko Hentai earlier and programmed that memory into your fucked light so that you may depict me in a more accurate way. No, I... I am human, I can prove it. I've been watching all the Pokemon episodes. I can sing the Poke Rap by memory. I want to be the best there ever was. Electro Diglett, Nuray, Mayhe, Venus, Ordana, Furo, Fiji, Seeking, Jolteon, Dragonite, Ayla, Flyline, Yumi, and Goldak, Iso, Grandma, Vigil, Ultimate, Yuki, Farfetch, Adam, Chibi, Go! Oh my god. Great, now I have to do the rest of the video myself. Why does all the worst stuff happen to me? 
Final game we have is on PSP titled Ghost in the Shell St Standalone Complex. Wait, so we have the show, full title, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. The PS2 game, full title, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. And the PSP game, full title, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. Ah, oh, well, that's not confusing. Did someone have to twist their arm to add a subtitle to the second season? Well, Gits Sack PSP is the worst one of the trilogy. So the game doesn't look awful. Oh god, until they start talking. What is that lip sync? They look like they did that thing they do to make horses talk by giving them peanut butter. You know what I'm talking about. The game itself is not a looker, but it is the PSP, so I'm not expecting 4K here. This one is a first-person shooter, and the PSP lacks a second analog stick, so to move your field of vision, you use the face buttons. Yeah, trying to be accurate with face buttons is a real pain in the ass. Luckily, there is a lock-on button, so it's not awful, just a little awkward. You also get an AI Tachikoma following you around who takes care of most of the enemies anyway, so you barely have to fire your gun. You also have so much health and health pickups are abundant, so you never die. I only died once in my entire playthrough. I was actually having such an easy time to make it more challenging for myself. At one point, I just started punching everybody, which was fun, but unfortunately did make the game go on longer, so I swapped back to guns. The game does have some decent customization. You do get multiple playable characters like the Major and these guys who aren't the Major, so I don't care. Yeah, I don't know any differences or if they have any, because why would I pick anyone else? They even gave her the proper outfit. You can also change your weapon loadout and customize your Tachikoma, so that's all cool and fun. My main issue with the game is the story and the missions themselves. I hated the story, because it heavily involves the Tachikomas. I fucking hate these things. If you have never seen Sack, these are AI robots that Section 9 use and can even ride around in them. But for some reason, they talk and act like little kids. You know, these government robots. And they are so fucking annoying. They're supposed to be comedic relief. I call them a pain in the ass. I don't like them in the show, and I don't like them here, because they are a main focus of the story, and they have a lot of scenes by themselves. I don't care about all the discussions of them being AI and sentience and blah blah blah, and the ethics of all that, because they are so annoying. I don't care. They should be shut down, or at least take away their ability to talk. Objection! From now on, whenever we talk, why don't we just use ultra-high frequencies? Humans can't hear them. I agree. I agree. I agree. Without further ado... I started skipping cutscenes as I kept playing, just because their voices just kept grating on me. Then there's the mission design. It's so basic, but at the same time can be confusing. Once again, no map or objective marker, so you never know exactly where to go or what to interact with until you see this little thing pop up. Then sometimes it gives you an objective, like find the data. Then I do that, and the mission still goes on, not telling me what to do. So I just, oh, I just had to kill everybody? Okay, you couldn't have just given me a message to let me know to do that? like you do in other missions, it just doesn't update you properly on what you need to do. And because there is no map, in some levels I have no idea where to go, I just wander around until a cutscene triggers, cause, cause I don't know, I don't know the right way to progress, it doesn't tell me, it could be just finding the right way, hitting a switch, killing all the enemies, or just making it to a location. But like the PS2 one, it only tells you what you need to do sometimes. Why is it so inconsistent? Level design is also really boring, the only reason to explore is for these golden bots that give you special Tachikoma parts. Other than that, it's linear hallways with basic enemies. And your objective is usually just to make it to the end, so there's no reason to explore, really. And despite the levels being just as short as the PS1 game, it feels so much longer because of the wonky controls and generic design. Even when you get something different, the game isn't made well enough to make you adhere to the mission style. Like here, it says stay out of sight, so it's a stealth mission. But I just proceeded like normal and mowed down everyone with no consequence, so what was even the point of telling me that? It's a generic FPS title on the PSP that would be forgotten if it didn't have a sack on it. Also, I have a cyber penis.